Okay, I'm Cahill McCall, uh, also in the School of Politics, International Studies and Philosophy. Incidentally, we do have uh, quite a few uh, female colleagues. Unfortunately, they couldn't be with us today, so that, that explains perhaps the gender imbalance. Um, from my own perspective, I have uh, an interest in borders, uh, growing up close to the Irish border, having to do work experience at school in a customs post, very interesting. And you never really get away from that, you know, you just have to come back, even though it it actually does expand your horizons, so you become very interested in borders throughout the European Union and beyond. Uh, and in fact, I'm off to Berlin tomorrow to talk about such, such issues. So, although it keeps me locked in, I've managed to escape it somehow. Um, in the context of uh, the United Kingdom's campaign, or the, the campaign in the United Kingdom to leave the European Union, it seems to me it's driven by lots of issues, but primarily uh, those relating to the mobility of EU workers. I'll just uh, move this along here. And of course, this sits against, this sits, sits in a media spotlight on contested migration against a backdrop of, prolong, of a prolonged period of economic austerity and the migration stroke refugee crisis affecting the Mediterranean, uh, uh, Southern Europe, uh, and, and, and on into the Europe, European Union. So a key element of the Leave campaign is to prevent the movement of unwanted outsiders to the United Kingdom. And as such, it focuses our attention on the UK's borders. Brexit demands the creation of clear, hard borders that, provide, that prove to be impenetrable for unwanted outsiders. So if that's the case, if that's the premise, then we have to ask, well, where would this um, hard Brexit border run in the event of, uh, of, of a Brexit? To me, there are three options. You hard border the state border, that is the Irish border between the United Kingdom and the Republic of Ireland. You hard border the island of Britain, or you hard, hard border the British Isles of the islands of Britain and Ireland. So I'll just run through um, uh, those three options. Hard border the Irish border, so that's the obvious candidate um, because the, uh, the UK shares its only land border with the, shares its only land border with the Republic of Ireland that doesn't have another uh, land border. And for some British politicians, there are no obvious objections to hardening the Irish border. For example, Paul Nuttall, the MEP and UKIP deputy leader, has remarked, quote, if there's a hard Irish border, there's a hard border, I wouldn't have a problem with it. So you may say, well, that's Paul Nuttall. He's uh, on the, on the uh, periphery of British politics. Well, it's important to remember that in the uh, general election, of 2015, UKIP attracted nearly 4 million voters, or 12.6% of the total vote. And those voters are like, likely to be activist voters in the forthcoming uh, referendum. The launch of the single market in 1992 and the Irish peace process uh, beginning uh, let's pick a date, 1994, uh, meant that the Irish border, Irish border customs posts and military checkpoints became surplus to requirements. Subsequently, secondary cross-border roads, of which there are roughly 200, were reopened, uh, and militarised sections of the border region, principally in South Armagh, were gradually scaled back through the dismantlement of the, uh, the mountaintop watchtowers, as well as the closure of heavily fortified security bases. So the result is that the physical manifestation of the Irish border is hardly discernible, save for a change in road markings, um, uh, mileage signs, and of course the uh, welcome to Northern Ireland signs that were erected in, in some places by the Department of Regional Development in 2012. So this softening of the Irish border has really involved uh, a quite subtle de-emphasizing of state sovereignty uh, and overcoming 
borders as barriers to communication, to mobility and to trade. And this, of course, is all very much embodied in the whole process of Europeanisation and the 1998 Belfast Agreement. After two decades of, of an open border and cross-border peace building, much of it funded by the EU through its interreg and peace programmes respectively, one might reasonably anticipate that in the event of a Brexit, the UK government would be alive to the dangers of reintroducing a border security regime and certainly closing many of the secondary close cross-border uh, roads um, uh, that, had, that have been uh, reopened since uh, 2000, uh, sorry, since 1994. Indeed, any such hardening of the border would be interpreted by Irish nationalist and Republican parties as an abrogation of the terms established by the 1998 agreement, uh, endorsed through simultaneous referenda in the North and South, and made law in the British Irish Agreement Act of 1999. But of course, um, British Eurosceptics, Eurosceptics in Britain are very much preoccupied with their concern over the European principle of freedom of movement and their desire to stop it. They don't take really uh, things that are going on here uh, too, seriously. too seriously. It's very peripheral uh, to their vision. After all, when you think of it, why would it be? Uh, why, why would they give it so much attention? The population of England is what, 56 million? Population of Scotland, 6 million? Population of Wales, 3.5, and Northern Ireland, 1.8. So it seems to me that in the absence of de facto controls over the borders of the Republic of Ireland through a, a British Isles border security regime, uh, it's, it's not really plausible that a post Brexit Conservative government. Uh, led by, I'll just pick a name out of, out of the air, Boris Johnson, uh, could or would entertain the continuation of, of an, open, uh, an open Irish border. So that's one option. There's also um, a question of bordering Britain, which uh, doesn't go down too well. You know. Uh, nor, nor does uh, creating a British Irish or uh, a British Isles uh, border security regime it doesn't go down too well in some quarters either. But I think it's important if there is evidence to suggest that these things have happened in the past or are 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 happening at the moment. Then it's important to consider uh, the specific evidence. So, in terms of the evidence of uh, securing a border of Britain, well, there is some evidence because. Um, after the fall of France in 1940, travellers from this island were required to carry passports or limited travel documents for war work to gain entry to Britain. And a full return to freedom of movement in a common travel area didn't happen again until 1952. A bordered Britain became a partial reality again under the 1974 Pre Prevention of Terrorism Temporary Provisions Act in response to the IRA bombing of two public houses in Birmingham. The Act, gave the, the Act gave the British Home Secretary the power to prevent individuals moving from Northern Ireland to Britain and also to deport individuals from Britain to Northern Ireland. And of course, the, the passengers at the Belfast Gate of Britain's airports were, were very much familiar with the intrusion of border control paraphernalia uh, before the experience became widespread after the, uh, the drama of the 11th of September 2001. Islamic jihadist attacks on the United States of America. So Britain's border within the UK combined with the permeability of the UK's land border with the Republic and Westminster's willingness to allow Northern Ireland to secede unilaterally in the event of a majority in Northern Ireland approving such a move is actually somewhat problematic for the idea of a UK border that is coterminous with the UK state. Britain is the de facto state and its borders are fuzzy. And the logic of Brexit is that Britain's borders may well retreat to Britain and who knows to possibly to England and Wales thereafter in the, in the quest to render them clear, secure and impenetrable to unwanted outsiders. Uh, you know, Nicola Sturgeon has um, stated publicly that she will press for another uh, referendum on Scottish independence in the event of a majority 
in England uh, being, for, uh, being for leave and a majority in Scotland for stay. And this is something that actually does exercise borderlanders uh, in, in England. Uh, uh, I was in berwick upon tweed uh, a few weeks ago uh, discussing this with local people and they are actually very concerned with this issue. So the third option then is uh, a British Isles border. You know, the, the, people talk about the, uh, the, the, the common travel area as a kind of mini Schengen. It's all about uh, the mobility, uh, mobility within, uh, promoting mobility within these islands. And certainly Schengen initially was very much about freedom of movement. The focus was very much on free, freedom of movement within the, within, uh, the Schengen area. But as the years progressed, and certainly after 2001, you see things like the common travel area and Schengen becoming more about border security regimes. Yes, it maintains freedom of movement within to a certain extent, uh, but um, is very much concerned with keeping unwanted outsiders out or at least monitoring their movements. And the common travel area uh, certainly is, um, uh, is uh, certainly testifies to a high level of cooperation and, and information sharing between the, the UK and the Irish electronic border control systems. And certainly this could form the basis for the development of a British Isles hard border encompassing both Britain and Ireland. In terms of intelligence and state security, it may be assumed that information sharing between relevant intelligence agencies in Britain and Ireland is already well advanced. Um, you know, you just have to go to the MI5 website and you, uh, you, you'll see um, fairly detailed statements on the information sharing that goes on. Brexit raises the possibility of an intensification of such information sharing and cooperation to the ends of hardening the border of the British Isles and excluding unwanted outsiders. So that scenario would obviously pose uh, great difficulties for the Irish government and it certainly doesn't go down too well uh, with officials in the Department of Foreign Affairs and Trade when I mention it. <coughs> um, and that is obvious. That the, the reason for that is obvious. The, the reason for it is it poses, it would pose um, a question mark over the continuation of the Republic of Ireland's EU membership. Because any attempt to restrict the mobility of EU workers runs counter to the IKEA and the freedom of movement principle of the European Union. Now, this didn't stop most pre-2004 uh, member states, including France and Germany, from, from, from imposing their own temporary restrictions on uh, workers from the 2004 accession states. Restrictions can be maintained uh, for a maximum of seven years after accession. The, diff the difference is that the proposition of a, a, a Brexit British Isles hard border suggests the imp imposition of permanent restrictions. And such an eventuality would uh, leave Ireland between a rock and a hard place regarding its EU membership. And that's a very arresting proposition uh, for um, uh, officials and for politicians in the Republic, not least because uh, the state has reaped, apart from contemporary travails, it has re reaped 40 years uh, of benefits in terms of acquiring sovereignty, developing infrastructurally, uh, and opening culturally. Moreover, as a former British Labour MP the min and Minister for Europe, Dennis McShane, has pointed out, Brexit would absolve the UK of the obligation to treat Ireland with the status, respect and reciprocity that it has required upon becoming an EU member state. So these are some of, the, the, of, some of Britain's external facing Brexit bordering dilemmas. Of course, the EU being a customs union will also be concerned with maintaining the integrity of that union through ensuring that, that the, the common tariff is applied in the same way all along the EU's external borders. After a Brexit, that would potentially require the establishment of border customs posts. Again, the question is where? Thanks.